algorithms maybe exist since mathematicians exist, since the ancient times of uh, humanity, because people started trying to compute and calculate and solve difficult mathematical problems. But among these mathematicians, uh, there were a particular category who not only tried to solve uh, complex problems, but also tried to help other people who were not mathematicians to solve these problems. So they proposed to them recipes to solve the problems without maybe understanding the entire globality of the recipe, but understanding every individual step and therefore solving the problem and calculating. So these recipes were later called algorithms because one mathematician named Algorithm wrote a book of recipes named Algebra. This is Rachid Gerawi, a professor of the SE School at EPFL. He has recently been appointed digital chair of the prestigious Collège de France, where he will be giving lectures on distributed computing and insisting on its importance in a modern world where algorithms are becoming more and more ubiquitous. Yeah, I think it's true because whenever we do something today, it's usually... Uh, if not driven, advised by algorithms, where restaurants we go to, planes we take, uh, where we drive, etc. Most of these things are today driven by algorithms. So they are important and they are actually everywhere, even without us noticing that uh, always. This ubiquity of algorithms raises both hopes and fears. So is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's a, it's a question of, of maybe angular perspe perspective. On the one hand, it's good because algorithms don't, uh, don't, don't drink, don't sleep, don't fight. So why, why shouldn't they drive our cars? In theory, they should be much better drivers than us. And uh, in, in actually, we also notice that algorithms are much better than us in, in finding whether uh, there is a tumor based on the picture or radio they see. So they are very, very good. So we should actually be trust in them because they are efficient and they are efficient because they run on machines that do not sleep, do not drink, do not fight and therefore we should be trusting them. So this is the, the, good, the good part. Okay, what's the bad part? So the bad part is that uh, as we notice sometimes algorithms make mistakes and they make uh, mistakes and these mistakes are amplified by the underlying computing system, which, as I pointed out, was very powerful. So when it's a good thing, the computer system amplifies the good thing. When it's bad, a bad mistake, the computer system amplifies it, and the consequences can be very drastic because we do rely today on algorithms. So preventing algorithmic mistakes or more generally algorithmic undesirable behaviors has become critical for societies. So how hard is it to prevent mistakes? We usually know where the mistakes come from a posteriori. We know that this is the mistake is has been caused by uh, biased data or, or by a mistake in, in an algorithm or a programming fault or by a machine that has been bogus or has been controlled by an adversary. We usually know that after the fact. In other words, post-mortem analysis is not too hard. However, it's very hard to anticipate them, anticipate these errors and prevent them. So what can be done? People have been devising for the last uh, half century techniques to prove the correctness of algorithms and then test programs on machines and uh, make sure that the, the, the probability of errors is very, very small. So people have been working on that for the last half century. In fact, we've discussed it in length with Professor Kunchak. The thing is the following. These techniques that have been developed for the last half centuries have all assumed the so-called universal model of Turing. So Alan Turing in 1936 uh, drew a picture or a model of computing that is d driving our computers today. They are based on that model. And the techniques we are using today to try to prevent bugs and mistakes are based on that model of Turing, the universal machine. The problem is that because we wanted our computing systems to be fast and robust, we connected several machines together, several machines, each of them obeying to the Turing model. But when we put them together, they stop obeying that Turing model and we lose the universal model of Turing and therefore the techniques we have devised do not apply, at least they do not apply directly. And in fact, tomorrow at the Collège de France, Rachid Guerraoui will be giving his inaugural lesson where he will introduce the field that studies the correctness of connected machines, also known as distributed computing.
uh, everything else uh, that, that we uh, rely on uh, that manipulates information relies on on infrastructure software uh, on on the, on the cloud infrastructure and uh, if if some of this uh, is uh, is misbehaving we have uh, outages we have a huge loss of productivity and and maybe some of the uh, the, the worst possible scenarios are uh, still uh, uh, it's still something that we could uh, we could potentially experience in the future. Distributed computing is a discipline that tries to understand tries to understand why when we put machines together either because we want them to be more robust or we want them to be faster by putting several processors together uh, and just try to understand why we lose this universality of, of Turing. 